time to let the cat out of the bag for another copycat color scheme. d miniature patreons like to show miniatures that they're releasing next month in the current month that you're usually in usually this is done like a roadmap situation so everybody knows what they're going to be getting by sticking around for another month well sometimes it's hard not to get hyped and excited and inspired by some of the models that you know are going to be coming out and when i saw these ones i knew immediately what they needed to be painted like and those models are the Duchies of Vinci Scouts from One Page Rules. They can also be taken wingless, but in my case, it was the wings that inspired me, along with the armor that they have on that's a little lighter than the city guards. So what did they remind me of so much that I had to do a copycat color scheme? It's a little indie title, so I can't expect everyone to know him, but if you've played the game, you should immediately understand, because it's Otis from Owlboy. I feel like his colors will fit these scouts perfectly and probably make me reminisce about the game as I paint it. I'm going to start with his tunic. Depending on the artwork of Otis, it can vary between a yellow ochre or a light yellow green. Since I have the option, I'm going to go with the green one, but keep it on the side of yellow towards the highlights. To do a base coat though, I'm starting with a sap or thalo green and mixing in a yellow ochre. Halo Green has a high tinting strength, which means you don't need much to make the yellow green. This goes on his arms and the coat down along his legs, as those parts even have some of the same downward lines Otis's shirt does. Two coats of this to make it a solid base. For the next layer, I just add a bit more yellow ochre to the green and do a second base coat as it were. Basically, I'm picking out each section within the patterns, so base coating a single line over his overcoat, always pulling down towards the most exposed area, and on his ruffles, just a quick line through the center, while the checker ruffles just have each part of the padding picked out. After that, it's more yellow into the green, but this time, as I layer it on, I take care to follow the actual folds of the cloth, leaving at that second base color where it dips in, and getting the edges and light points where it folds out. For the ruffles, I just try to pick out the folds within to highlight, leaving the upper part of the arm mostly alone. And the checker pattern, I highlight each bit of padding towards a center point where I think it's the lightest. Last layer, and it's just pure yellow ochre. The thing about it though, is the green is still going to show through a tiny bit as long as all the previous layers were thin as well. So I'm going to stipple it onto the lightest parts of the folds and edges when it comes to his overcoat, and just dot important points on the ruffles and checker padding on his arms. If we go back to the reference to see where we're at, it looks like the shadows here go quite a bit darker than where I started, but they're also not as saturated as the greens and yellows I've used so far, so I'm going to take the base layer mix and add just a bit of black instead of using the darker green, so it removes some of the saturation. Then just find those really dark recesses and either wet blend it out, or in the case of these cloth folds, draw in the shadows just under it. For the pants, the process will be much the same, only with a different color since Otis has a nice light khaki color for his pants. Khaki is an interesting color since it's not really a color, but just a really light yellow or brown. So in order to figure out exactly which would make the right shade for his pants, I need to mix a few and decide which is best. The brown alone looks a little too pinkish or skin-like. The dark yellow on its own is in the right area, but a bit too saturated. So I tried a lighter yellow ochre and still again, it was too yellow as Otis has seemed more of a reddish hue. So a mix of the brown and dark yellow would give the saturation of the yellow, while the brown gave the red tint. Once I got my color, it just became about getting it on the model, which you may have noticed is a different pose. I realized that in the last color, that that pose kind of blocks a lot, so this one's going to be more easy for us to see. Starting with a base coat, it took a few times to go over it, to get it even as it was pretty transparent going on. Once it was base coated, I had enough foresight to start with the wash this time, as it wasn't as dark as it could be in the shadows compared to the reference. But once that was dry, it was just layering in gradual steps, only adding a bit of white each time until I was happy with the brightness. This is the point in which I had to make a few decisions. If we notice Otis's hair, it's pretty much the same color as his boots and tie, which is fine, 
but in our case the model's wearing a metal helmet. So I'm going to take some liberties with the colors and divide the dark red into two, a flat paint and a metallic paint. This way I can have the same hue, but separate out the parts. This will be most clear on the boots, so that's where I'll focus for now, starting with a nice base coat for both, the red getting all the parts I want to look like leather, and the metallics on the parts of the armor that would be metal. I'm using Garnet Alchemy from Scale 75 with black and red oxide mixed in, but if you don't have that and want to follow along, use your darkest and most orange or red hued metallic, and I think with the oxide mixed in, it'll look fine too. I did the base coat of these together because for a shade, I'm going to take the easy way out and just hit them both with some Argrax Earthshade. They're already quite dark, so this is more to just pick out the deep recesses so I won't have to worry about black lining. Once that's dry, it's time to work on the leather. Using just a small brush, I take the base and add a bit more of the red oxide and just layer it up towards the highlight points, pretty much like I did for the jacket and pants, but upwards instead of down. Then with the raw red oxide, start to stipple in some texture and pick out my highlight areas. I do want to keep these a dark red, but I also want it to look like leather. So just one highlight of adding the yellow ochre already on my palette to the oxide to do some edge highlighting, then blending that highlight out with a bit of stippling on the edge of it. Then a few random straight line scratches for even more texture. For the metallics, I'm going to mix in a bit more of the garnet alchemy into the oxide and black that was used for the base. This will add more of the metallic pigment and give it a more metallic shine where I put it, but not really change the hue. In this case, I'm keeping things simple and just doing edge highlights around the whole surface of the metallic, since the base is kind of the color we wanted already. I don't want to go over top of it too much, but I do want it to shine more and create contrast. So by sticking to the edges, I'll be able to get both of those and let the metallic do its work. By adding a bit of chainmail or silver to the last mix, I can pick out some highlight points as well, further pushing the contrast. And then, optionally, we can go in with a raw silver just to pick out a few of the brightest points. I thought originally the chest piece was all one solid part of metal, but when I looked closer, I noticed it had the same texture as the overcoat, so I did that up with the green as well. Then for all the leather parts, it was the boots, the pouches on his hips, the straps across his chest and shoulders, as well as the ones on his right glove, and the fingers of the right glove, and lastly the sides of the helmet that hang below the cap. For the red metallics, it was the shoes and claws at the bottom of his boots, the chest plate, the helm, the trim of the shoulders, the hilt of his sword, and the backpack. We've only got a few colors to go now, one being the trim on Otis's shirt, and luckily we have all this trim right here next to the green to do on the scouts. So I mix up a grey using an off-white instead of a pure white, since in the reference it's a bit beige and I'm going with gray to start, so it covers as a base a bit better. Carefully getting that base coat around the trim of the overcoat, as well as the belt that looks like a piece of armor, but I think can realistically also just be a fancy shaped sash that sits around the waist. Makes sense to me, they fly, so would have less metal than they need. Oh, and the upper sections of the frills, very carefully. To start with the shadows, I wet blend some more of the black into the really dark areas. But I try and keep it sparse, since most of this will be lit, then just continue with adding more of the off-white to the mix and layering it up bit by bit until I'm happy with it. Otis here wears a pair of large chrome gauntlets, so that's why I've not really touched the gloves much at all, because I want to get all the metal parts at the same time. Starting with a dark steel, I mix in some black for the first base coat. The process will be much like the red metal, base coating the gloves, but also the metal parts on the crossbow the rivets and buckles on the chest, boots, and pouches, and while I would also do the wing gears, I'm going to save those until after. And then, much like Argrax on the red metal, it's null oil for the chrome. Once dry, I rebase all the metallics with just the raw dark steel. If we look at the reference, the gloves have a lot of contrast, so I want to keep that as best I can even though I'm using metallics. So leave lots of nice, deep, dark parts when doing the rebasing. Then, with a medium silver, draw in some highlight lines that follow the curve along the glove. Then lastly, highlight with the brightest silver I have on the brightest points along the edges. For the front side of the wings, I actually have to consult a different reference, since in the one I've been using, he doesn't have his cape open, but it is two colors. The outside, the dark red, 
and the inside a yellow ochre. Now white and yellow over this dark base coat is going to be a pain to try and get an even base coat on. So here I'm using a primer gray, but even that is going to be a bit transparent. So I'm going to make that transparency work for me and give us that underlying pattern. So with my large brush, I'm going to stipple over the whole area in pretty big splotches and then let it dry fully. Then I add white to my palette and once again use it to stipple in large dots towards the lower part of the wing where it's going to be brightest. You can see what I'm doing here is actually making a modeled zenithal, having a light and dark area that will be going over with yellows instead of trying to paint directly on the black. Then to get the colors on there, I'm going to make two pools, one for the yellow ochre, then the yellow ochre with a lot of white mixed in. From here, there's two ways we can blend this out over the wing. Method number one is to use a brush. Making sure the paint is nice and wet, though not too thin and watery, start by adding the dark into the darkest points, then the light in the lighter points. Then while they're still wet, whisk the brush between them to get them to blend. Once you have a bit of a blend between them, stop and let it dry fully. If you keep going, you risk ripping up the paint. Then, once dry, we can do that whole process again to add another layer to smooth the blends a bit more. Method two is to just use an airbrush. Start with the same stippling, but using the airbrush to blend between the top and bottom of the wings. I take the time to build up the layers to a transparency I'm happy with before mixing in some white and transitioning down the wing just adding a bit more water and white each time. Then when it's all dry, I want to get some of the separation back into the wing folds and do some lining with a brown with a bit of ochre mixed in. In hindsight, this would have been better to do after the ochre layer, but before the bright ones. So to bring it back from the brink, I did a few more layers of the lightest color just so those lines fade off a bit. For the back of the wings, luckily it's a bit easier as I just have to follow the same thing I did with the leather. Start with a black and red oxide base, then wash with Argrax, stipple that with the base layer again, then the base with a bit more oxide. I gave it a blending glaze as the transition was a bit too harsh still, but that evened it out. And then finally, stippled the red with a bit of yellow ochre added. To finish the models off, I just painted all the connecting wing gears exactly like I did the metal on the front of the model. Wings are always my Achilles heel with models. Because there's always two sides to them, it feels like you're repeating yourself, which can be tedious. Getting to paint each side a different color is one way to break up that monotony. If you want to find these models for yourself, check the link in the description. Subscribe if you want to see more videos like this one. And until next time, enjoy your own painting journey.